Hi, I'm Claudia. And I'm Elena. And together we run Miric Slooms. So what is a Miric Sloom? This is a Miric Sloom. It is an upright, portable, copper and aluminum loom that is used for tapestry weaving, which is a fiber weaving, uh, bead weaving, or a combination of bead and fiber weaving. You can also weave wire on a Merix loom, you can weave paper. Uh, the possibilities are really endless. It is the most versatile loom on the market. You might wonder why and how Merix got started. Well, it, it, like apparently a lot of other companies, got started in a garage. It no longer is in a garage. It now actually is in a, a real life building with uh, employees and all that good stuff. The reason it got started was I wanted a loom like this and there was nothing on the market like it. See, Claudia, mom, was a professional tapestry weaver and she wanted a loom that was high quality and portable so she could take it to my soccer games and my gymnastics meets and she really would do that. Okay, so now you know how much I embarrassed her when she was young. I, in my studio at home, I had two huge floor looms. And I have subsequently gotten rid of both of them because they take up too much loom room. And in fact, the largest of the Murex looms is, which is 38 inches wide, is large enough for me. There's, I never need to weave anything larger than that. So it was good that I got rid of the, the two huge looms that took up most of my studio space. When I was a kid, I thought it was totally normal to have a living room with one couch and two giant rooms. <laughs> so the nice thing about the Mirix loom is you can, on the larger looms, weave really large pieces and when, you're getting, when you get sick of looking at the loom, and I don't think you ever will because the loom is very beautiful. What's our saying? Because the loom you weave on should be a work of art. Uh, you could just throw it under the bed or stick it in the closet. Uh, great for city dwellers who don't have a lot of space. So, I wanted this loom and I asked a friend to make this loom for me. I was interested in it having a shedding device. A shedding device is this thing which makes a shed. The shed is the space between the lower and the raised warps. And I wanted a simple one that worked well. That was really important for me. So he made it um, out of parts he found in his garage. He worked for a fire truck company and he had some aluminum tubing and he had some copper plumbing pipes because I guess he used to fix his plumbing. And he had some trim, which is below the spring that actually uh, is trim that goes on a fire truck. And you know, some threaded rod and this and that. And he threw together a prototype, which actually doesn't look that much different from what we have today. Uh, we upgraded a bunch of things. We, we used to have eye hooks here instead of these beautiful little brass pieces and the original handle we uh, baked the plastic on in his oven. I don't know how toxic that was but I'm sure it was pretty bad. Uh, so we upgraded and you know went to different manufacturing companies and had pieces made for us that we need specifically for this loom. Uh, we, ha we have a, a certain kind of aluminum tubing extruded for us that has smooth sides, uh, you know, various other things. So she was born, I think the first one was 10 inches wide, and in fact we don't even make one that wide. Uh, the first prototype that we actually sold was 16 inches wide, and we also had a 32 inch wide one. Those were two original looms. Uh, let me tell you, you remember the story of when we put it on the market. It's hilarious. We started the company in Wisconsin, even though I knew that we were moving to New Hampshire. So it made no sense whatsoever, but that's what we did. And so my partner was in Wisconsin, and just as we launched the loom, which we did at Convergence, which is a weaving event that happens every two years, um, I called up Earth Guild and they were going to have a booth there and I said would you take some of our looms and they were a little reluctant and I said well look I'll send you 20 of them I'll pay the shipping if you don't send them sell them you can send them right back to me and I'll pay the shipping just just try it 
And so they said, okay, fine. There was no risk. And when I, when we got to New Hampshire and we got our phone plugged in, so it was about two days from the time we left Wisconsin, flew to New Hampshire, got our phone plugged in, that's pre-cell phone, uh, I got a phone call on our 800 number because we, had, we already had an 800 number. And the woman wanted to buy a loom and she had been at Convergence. I said, well, why didn't you buy them at Earthville? She said, because they sold them all. So in about three or four days, we had sold all 20 looms and I realized we were in business. And that is the beginning. Manufacturing is still in Wisconsin today. Claudia is based in New Hampshire and I am in Seattle. So if you want to remain close to your children, one of the best things you can do is run a company with them. You'll see them every day. If you don't like your children, that's not a good idea, but I happen to really, really like her. Um, do you want to talk about the different sizes? Sure. So we have eight different looms. They range in size from the five inch mini Merrick's, which is about that big. It's our pocket loom, uh, to the 38 inch loom that we were discussing before, which is 38 inches wide. Um, and then we have the, in the middle, we have the eight inch loom, which is this loom. We have the 12 inch little guy loom. We have the 16 inch big sister loom. We have the 22 inch Zach loom, the 28 inch McKinley loom, the 32 inch Joey loom, and then the 38 inch loom. Uh, Zeus so we, loom, the Zeus loom. The 38 inch Zeus loom. That's very important. And the, this is the length one actually, after me. Um, it was her idea. She, she did not even work for Murex at the time. It was, I was like ago. 12. <laughs> yeah, you were like, I, I think you should have a, a loom that's more like a bead loom that's that's small, that's this size. And I just wanted a cute loom. So I... It's pretty cute. So we did it. It's we very cool. Named it after. One thing we like to do at Murex is to listen to our customers because our customers frequently have amazing ideas. Uh, for example, when one of our customers named McKinley decided that the 22 inch loom wasn't quite wide or tall enough for what he wanted to do, but the 32 inch loom was too wide, he said, why don't you have one in the middle of those two? And I said, well, let's, uh, let's think about it. And a week later, Sandy whipped one up for us and we had the 28 inch McKinley loom, which of course we named after McKinley. Thank you very much, McKinley. So we love to do that. With there have been other accessories that have been inspired. Zeus the Zeus loom was inspired by Hester. Oh, the Zeus loom! Oh my gosh, that's right. This one, this is a great story. Someone, our, our largest loom was the Joni loom, named after my best friend. And someone called up and said, "Do you have a loom that's big enough to accommodate a weaving that's 35 inches wide and I think 40 inches tall?" And I said, "No." Why? She said, well, I have this Navajo loom, and I have a piece on it, which is that size, and, I, and the loom is driving me crazy, and I want to be able to transfer it to a Murex loom. Is that possible? And I said, well, if you had a loom that was the right size, it would be. So I said, I'll make a deal. I'll make two of them. One for me, one for you. I'll send it to you. If you like it, you can buy it. If you don't, you can send it back. I sent it to her. She was easily able to transfer her weaving onto the Murex loom and successfully finished this piece that she loved so much and then went on to weave a bunch of other pieces. So that's how the Zeus loom was born. One of our philosophies at Merrick's Looms is that buying a loom should be more than just buying a product. It should be joining a community where you have all the support you need from us and from other members of the community who are also weaving. Because on your own, you have so much creativity, and in a group, we have way more creativity. The things that our customers come up with, the advice that they give each other, the advice that they give us is absolutely incredible. Um, and so we've, we've started this online community that can be found on Facebook, on Ravelry, um, on Twitter, on you know a lot of different online social forums, we also have um, things like Weave Alongs, which is a project where 
a whole group of people weaves it at the same time. So if we were going to have a beaded bracelet project, um, we would have kits for sale, but we'd also allow people to choose their own materials. And every week, once a week, we would email everybody and we would say, okay, so this week we're going to warp our looms. Uh, this is how you warp it. Um, this is how wide it needs to be. Um, and then the next week we'd start weaving it and we'd go through all those steps and this whole group of people is able to do this same project together and then talk about it on social networks um, or by email or um, on our website or commenting on blog posts and stuff like that. But it's a great community experience and it really, it brings people together um, and it helps people grow as artists and, and learn in a really safe and fun environment. So that's kind of a big basis of our philosophy at Merix. And the other side of that is that we have so much free material. We have videos, we have free projects, we have ebooks, we have tutorials, we have all our old leave alongs that you can go back and read. Um, we have our blog, which has tons of information right now, and you know, we do this, we've done this a couple times now. Uh, we have a program called Social Market for Amerix going on, which is this program where we chose uh, three people this time, and they got free Amerix looms, and they're getting kits every few months in exchange for blogging and doing videos about their experience with the looms. So it's a great place for you to see what it's like um, for somebody who just got their loom. Um, you know, is it easy for them to set up? Well, what are the things that they're creating on it? And just follow their journey through owning Amerix. Um, and we've just we've had our uh, social market for Amerix participants have come up with some absolutely incredible things. Uh, right now we have one person who's more focused on tapestry um, and two people who are focused on beadwork, um, but they've, they're just surprising us every day and it's really interesting to follow. So you can find all that information on our blog. Yeah, and we, we learn a lot from these people and they're, they're always so enthusiastic. Where do we get the name? You want to, people always ask us and it's very bizarre because I was looking for a word to name this company, and I had an Italian dictionary and a Greek dictionary, and I, I got stuck in my head the idea of mirroring, to mirror, and um, I can't even remember what the verb was, but it, it had an M and an I and an R in it, and I thought about Kleenex, how we would be able to say Kleenex and say tissues, so I stuck a little X at the end of it, and we got Mirrix, and it stuck. It's a great name. I love it. But it doesn't really mean it. doesn't, well, to mirror, to wonder at. Yeah, we haven't talked about where you can find your things. You can find them on our website, and we offer free shipping on uh, orders, orders over 200, 200, which is fabulous, and $6 if it's under that, so. Uh, in the that, U.S. In the United States. If you live in another country, we don't mean to be bigoted, but you know, it's kind of expensive to send it there, so. You guys have to pay, although we do have dealers in, um, in England, in France, and Australia, and Canada, so you can go there. We sell through a bunch of stores in the United States, some bead stores, you know, all the big yarn stores sell it. Uh, and also through teachers. Through teachers. We have this wonderful program that if you teach on the Murex Loom, uh, we give you a discount so that you can sell the Murex Loom. So if you're, if you're a teacher and you're interested in teaching on a Murex Loom, please contact us about that program. Turns out teachers are the best people to sell Murex Looms because they show the people how to use them. And that's really important. So, thank you for watching this little Murex video. We hope you learned a little bit about our company and our loons and us. So thank you and thank you for a wonderful 18 years. Here's to many more. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> thank you.